Following my recent video on quitting my day job, I thought I'd make a video on the difference between a YouTube photographer and a traditional professional photographer. Peter Lindbergh, who I think of as a traditional photographer, and Peter McKinnon, who I think of, obviously as you'll probably know, as a YouTube photographer. Let's jump into the video and I'll give you more information. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLiker.com. So first, thanks so much for all your support following my quitting my job video. Some of you raised a concern about becoming a professional photographer, it kills your love and passion for the photography game and so I wanted to break down the differences between a YouTube photographer which is what I've become compared to a traditional photographer that many of you maybe think about in the old sense. So if we look at a traditional photographer first professional photographer instead of taking photos when you want to and of what you want to suddenly you have to take photos just to pay your bills. This is a really easy way to kill your hobby and passion for photography because no longer are you making photos that perhaps you want to take maybe not always and sometimes you're just more taking photos to put food on the table as it were if you're a wedding photographer well, yes weddings are great but if you're doing weddings say every week you're probably eventually going to get bored of the same every wedding's got the same start of the day same middle of the day same cake cutting same first dance and so it probably could becomes a bit repetitive the biggest problem with a traditional photography approach is you have a single income source that being you take photos you get money it's the fact i think that you have to take photos sometimes when you don't want to take photos that eventually it kills your hobby and then you start to resent having to take photos it's like oh i've got to get up this morning to take photos otherwise i can't pay my rent this month so that's traditional photography and that's how I probably looked at photography maybe 10 years ago when I thought I don't want to be hustling every day trying to nag people oh I'll give you 10% off if you come and have a photo shoot with me just to try to get some business you sometimes see this on Facebook and things where people are constantly trying to get business and it must become a bit soul soul breaking <laughs> so that's traditional photography. Peter Lindbergh may not be the best example because obviously if you get really good at any one part of photography then you you would never be sure to work by Peter I tried to think of a photographer that was not a an influencer what about being a YouTube photographer the brilliant thing about being a YouTube photographer is you can have multiple sources of income and so you may not necessarily need to take any photos or say very few photos on a paid basis if you didn't see my video on quitting my career I highly recommend you watch that because in that video I released my new ebook on how to make money with photography. That book breaks down 25 ways of making money with photography so that then you can get multiple sources of income and then you can move away from the traditional photographer approach and more towards hopefully a more balanced lifestyle and enjoyable way of making money with photography related things. So if we now look at YouTube in particular, which is the, the route I've taken, you can get make money from various sources as a YouTuber. Number one is the obvious one, YouTube ad revenue. So every time you make a video, if people watch it, it's a combination of how many people watch it and how long they watch it for, gives you a, a, a figure of money at the end of the month. And that probably pays me 50%, maybe 40 to 50% of my regular income. Number two, if you're new to the channel, I've also been blogging since 2013. I use a website called WordPress. If you write a lot of content on WordPress, every time people view your blog, if there are ads on your blog, you make a small amount of money from what's called word ads or there's various various ways to do it. It does make a huge amount of money, but you get some kind of dollars or pounds coming in each month, which is called passive income. I'm not doing anything and money is still coming in. I'll talk more about passive income in a second. Number three, for big YouTube channels, often you see channels that have sponsored by say Squarespace, for example, if it's a photography channel. If you get a sponsor, that's another great way of making money because the sponsor will give you money each time you make a video and mention their name or their product. YouTubers are kind of now like influencers. Once you have lots of people following you, it's very easy to offer them things relating to your service to help them, that will then hopefully help make you money also. So a lot of the big channels will offer merch, t-shirts, caps, mugs, all that type of thing. They can make an affiliate link to say Amazon below their video. If anybody clicks that link and buys something within, I think it's the next 24 hours, the person that made that link will then get some kickback from Amazon. Roughly, I think it's 2% on electrical products. They offer, say, Lightroom presets, the same as me. I offer all the different Leica Lightroom presets. I can put some links below. And then as us photographers, obviously, we're often we're taking photos for our own benefits. And so we can then use those to make photo related products. Some big photographers will sell photo books or photo zines or maybe photo calendars or sell prints on their website. I've sold model photo books via Patreon in the past. I might make those 
more available for kind of a wider audience in 2023. So as you can see, all the things I've mentioned so far, I'm still making money from photography related income sources, but I'm not necessarily taking any photos for a particular individual. I might just be taking test photos to make review videos. People might take landscape photos because that's their hobby, and then you make it into a photo book and sell the photo book. You're still only taking photos when you want to take photos of things you want to take photos of. And that's the big difference, I think, between a YouTube photographer and, say, a traditional photographer. You don't need to be a YouTuber. You can, if you're an influencer with a massive following on, say, Instagram, this will work exactly the same for you. Then if you want to branch out further as a YouTuber and to have a more divided source of income, I teach Leica workshops, helping people use their both film Leica cameras and digital Leica cameras on a one-to-one -one basis. And I'll also start doing it on a small group basis. Like in Dubai in November, when I taught 12 photographers in Dubai how to teach model photography. So that's the other thing I teach, model photography. I've got my Patreon platform, which is my remote teaching platform. I've called it Mr. Lucky University. So basically that's me teaching people everything I've learned about photography over the last 10 years. A lot of it to do with model photography. So if you want to get into how to photograph models, you might find that useful. Because it's remote, you don't need to be able to get to, say, London or to a big city to meet me. I also teach one-to-one -one remotely via Zoom consultations. So... There's a link on the MrLiker.com blog, or I can probably put a link below. So that's quite a few ways of making money with photography, and I'm not yet taking any photos. Occasionally I'll do model shoots where I'm paid to do a portfolio shoot. That's making money with taking pictures. And then the most obvious one for myself is wedding photography. So my wedding photography is probably the closest I get to being a traditional photographer in terms of you have a client, you do photos for them on the day, you get paid, and... Normally that's what people would do 100% of the time, but I only probably do that for 5% of the time. So because I'm not doing weddings every day, I still love every wedding shoot that I do. And it's still quite fresh because I might do one every couple of months in the summer months, for example. But the beauty of the YouTube style photography approach is you're not relying on having to do a wedding, say one wedding per month to make you be able to pay your rent. One revenue stream may stop, but then you might get more from another revenue stream. And so overall, you get the same amount of money for the month, or you might get slightly more money for the month. So for example, in the summer months, I'll probably be getting more money from workshops and weddings when the, the weather's better. And then in the autumn months, normally YouTube are paying more money for their ad revenue, September, October, November, early December, and then January, the ad revenue will drop off. If you've not yet downloaded my ebook on making money with photography, Highly recommend you do so. Hopefully it will pay back very quickly. One of the main differences between a traditional photographer and a call it YouTube photographer or modern photographer is traditional photographers get paid for the time they are working. You, you work eight hours for a wedding shoot, you'll get paid for working eight hours for a wedding shoot. With a YouTube photographer or maybe a photography influencer, it's really good to try to build up passive income streams. With passive income sources, the beauty is you make money 24-7. And so people that are good at this and have done this for years, they're the ones that maybe go and live on their desert island and enjoy life drinking cocktails or whatever. And their system that they built in the past is just slowly ticking over in the background, making money every day. Check out my ebook, you might find it useful. I hope you all had a great Christmas. I'm recording this on Boxing Day and I'm at my brother's house, so I thought I'd take advantage of a, a different studio background for you to try to make these videos a bit more interesting. If you've got any video requests for me to make in 2023, drop them in the comments and if it's something I can do, I'll definitely take a look. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. A massive thanks as always to my awesome patrons and see you all in the next video. It will be a gear video, I promise. <laughs> Bye.